Tony. Zuma. And Zayn. Tibble. Linda. Chris. Arbo. Andy. Kavisha. Josh. Jim. Ross. Dean. Hayman. And Kat. There's all these patterns, shapes and forms, not only the people, but the things that are in all the adornment and the basic space of the Lord. A phenomenal manifestation. And the definition of phenomena is that which appears to be. We might think we are these individuals, these separate entities, these persons. But the reality is that you are life itself. Each a unique expression of life. Only the one seemingly separate and divided. And it couldn't realise or recognise itself. If it didn't be divine, could there be good without bad? Could there be silence without sound? Or the moon was without stillness, winter without summer? It couldn't be. But the problem is we've taken on and divided that one essence appearing as words, concepts, ideas, images, you take them to be separate. But there is no separate enti entity anywhere at all. It's all the one is. Let's see what happens when we believe we are this separate. We've taken ourselves away from the absolute and believing and we are with these persons, individuals, separate entities. And that sense of separation is isolation. It's insecurity, it's vulnerability. And uh, the belief goes into that sense. And instead of being the one intelligence entity Expressing as everything, we take on the I am this person, this separate entity <coughs> that needs to become <coughs> something, to become enlightened or realized or liberated or whatever. But becoming is not being. Anyone who is not being right now, no one can say, oh, I am not. So that needs to be recognised that I am already that. And that's what they tell us in the ancient text of scriptures. I am that I am. And that I am is not the thought. It's the life itself. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And uh, no one can come to the Father except through I am. That sense of presence needs to recognise 
what they call the father or the life essence of soul. They put the label God on it. You look in the Bible and say in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, the Word was God. It's all God is, is the Word. All things were made by Him, by the Word. Isn't that so? Can you name it? anything at all without the Word? And there was nothing made that was made without the Word. And where did we words come from? Were you born with any word? Well, for a start off, can you remember your birth? If you can't remember your birth, where, where did you begin? And you go back and say that the, you are the beginningless beginning. Because from the little sp sperm and ovum, two microscopic colours coming together, formed the little embryo, the little fetus. Before that, before those microscopic particles of pure energy, pure vibration. And they call it the basic space of phenomena. All this phenomena, which appears to be, has to be, has to appear in something. How could it be other than that? No appearance, no thing. In its absoluteness, it can't know or recognise itself. And that's what they call absolute. <coughs> Great perfection, perfect, absolute, totality, non-duality. All words, all different labels we put on the, well, that which can't be separated, can't stand alone as something separate and apart from what is. It is all things and everything. And it is only the one essence, not two. And with the words, as Shakespeare told you, there's nothing either good or bad but thinking much or so. And that's how the words express in the opposites. Good, bad, pleasant, painful, happy, sad, loving, hating, here, there. All words which we divide the indivisible, the inseparable, male, female. All expressions of the base in which it all appears in space. Space is no thing. This room seems to be in space. the space forms the room, patterns, shapes and forms and appears and expresses as the room. And as everything else. How would that help? Well, living now in the belief that I am a person, a separate entity, there is a realisation of a separation. And separation is isolation, standing on its own, that I am this individual and this person, that's separate from anything else. And so there's a lot of vulnerability and insecurity in that belief. What if I recognise that I am absolute? That is all there is. And then who can be superior to me? Who can be inferior? 
and what would I want from anybody else? Seeing it's all expressions of the one essence. And separation, which comes about with the learning of words, which weren't even recognised until that little embryo, that little fetus grew and the capacity of reasoning developed in it and it learnt words, it learns words from the parents, parents fussing around you speaking words, they'd learnt words from their parents. And you say you didn't learn words you're a couple of years old. Then they point out you must be prior to the word. You're before the words. Animals, birds and insects that don't have words. They have sounds. And so they can only function to a certain extent through the sounds. But with the learning of words, we can kind of create, we formulate all sorts of ideas, images, and different things, which, in that separation, can be very useful. But in the separation, they can become problems. What happens? If I recognise and look at things and recognise that I am what they call pure existence, I am conscious, I'm not unaware, I am loving to be, I don't want to be not be, I love to be. And that's what they're pointing out. The absolute, I am already that. But these words I've learned have been recognised and believed in for the time first started to reason. More words have been added to it and put it on this conceptual image, the belief that I am a person, a body, a mind, a conceptual image, just like the things appearing in the manifestation, trees, flowers, birds, insects, mountains, rivers, planets, stars, everything. Without the word on any of that, what is it? Isn't it just the one essence? And Buddha called it emptiness as form, pointing out that in this space-like awareness, which is emptiness of any pattern, the pattern shapes and forms through vibration appear in it. Emptiness is form, and the forms can be nothing other than the emptiness. And I believe that, because the parents told me so. They believed it. But then, looking into it a bit further, you see, there are some so-called pattern, shapes and forms that have recognised and know the truth and pointed it out and others have picked it up but not all of us look for it, try to find the answer but some of us realise that living as a separate entity with all its problems is not good enough. There's got to be more to life than that. And they're the ones that seek a little bit further. Not realising, in the look and the investigation of it, you see it is already so. And the search itself becomes a problem. Because we, do we think when the search we're going to become or get something. And the idea of becoming is time. Space is no thing, no pattern, no shape, no form, no boundaries, 
no centre, no circumference. Time is past, present and future concepts, ideas, images. If I look into that and investigate and see that time is a mental concept, it's the past if I don't think about it. Without a thought can you say there's a past or a future without the thought? Can't say anything at all. And if you stop breathing, the heart stop beating, hair and fingernails stop growing? No. And Shakespeare tells you that there's nothing either good or bad but thinking makes it. They talk about being, knowing, and loving to be. That's the Satchitananda, existence, consciousness, bliss. Anyone who is not being right now, anyone who is not existing, anyone who is not conscious or unaware, anyone who is not happy to be, no. You can't negate your beingness or existence. Can't we can get the knowing of that? And you don't want to be dead, so you must like being. <clears throat> Realize and recognize that I am, that sense of presence which expresses through the mind as the thought I am, is already that which they tell you. It's the great mantra, I am that. And you know that also. Because that's the chair you're sitting in. That's the room the chair's in. That's the space. That's, that's the trees. That's the flowers. Every That's the other people. Everything is that. Which we put words on and discriminate it and separate it and divide it into other. And realise it's only the belief of me or I becomes the problem. <coughs> because when I, the I, in the way thought functions, must be its opposite, not I. We divide ourselves and separate the reality that we are. And the Buddha calls it a cognizing emptiness. An emptiness with the capacity of cognizing or knowing. And he made the statement that emptiness is, emptiness is form. That all those pat shapes in this room are empty forms appearing in space. Space is no thing. Can something come from no thing? Emptiness is form and he turned it around the other way and pointed that out. The forms can be nothing other than emptiness. And they call it a phenomenal manifestation. <coughs> and the definition of phenomena is that which appears to be. So we've got this amazing universe before our eyes with all the different shapes and forms, not realising it is appearance only, seeming like a dream, similar to a dream. And the saga tells you that you're dreaming a dream you call the world. Stop looking for ways out. Trying to get out of the dream and think make something else. He says the dream is not your concern. Your concern is you love one part of the dream and not the other. He says, love all of it or none of it, and the rest will be done for you. Just the same as it brought you into existence and appears to be so, it's constantly transient, constantly changing, so it will be so. Pattern shapes and forms appear, play around and disappear. These bodies are the same, pattern shapes and forms, it plays around for a while and then disappears. Where does it come from? Well, it only can come from space. Space, there's no beginning or no ending. But there's nothing you can postulate or think of outside of space. Where can it go? Well, it can only go back to where it comes from. It appears and disappears. Mm. But the space has been never corrupted, never corrupted or touched by any of the shapes and forms and that all the pattern shapes and forms are adornments on that space. In a lot of cases they make the space look a lot better, more beautiful. In other ways they can make space seeming horrible. 
with wars and famines and floods and fires and all sorts of things happening. But has the space been contaminated or corrupted or touched in any way, shape or form? It hasn't. How could it be? You go to a movie and you see all the activities taking place in the movie. Dramas, comedy, all sorts of things taking place in it. But has the screen ever been contaminated or corrupted by anything that's appeared in? It hasn't. So space like awareness. Awareness that we know, there's nobody who is unaware right now. Each one is aware. And that awareness, we can't say what it is. You can't give it a shape and form. So it's like space. It's no thing. Yet everything is patterning, shaping, forming and appearing in it. Space is no thing. So can something come from no thing? It can't. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Right. Cool. 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 I made it, yes. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I can then take out the room. Keep going. So. All appearance. Yeah. All seemingly so. Nothing can be added to it, nothing taken away. Though it seems to appear and disappear, space has got no boundaries, no beginning, no end, no centre, no circumference. But in the sense of separation, when I get the concept of I or me, then the things which appear on it we take to be not me or not I and divide ourselves and division and separation as I say is insecurity and vulnerability so only me can be unhappy so only me can be fearful or anxious or depressed this image I have about myself and things don't <coughs> seem to fit with it or sit with it brings about fear, anxiety, stress, guilt, shame, remorse all the psychological problems we have, concepts or words, come up in it, appear to be real, seemingly real, and we suffer accordingly. And this life, this pure being, this sense of separation, becomes pretty miserable. And Wei 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 tells us, why are you unhappy? He says, because everything you say, everything you think, and everything you do is for yourself. And there isn't one. So if I see this self that I believe myself to be isn't a personal self, it is no thing except a thought, a conceptual image, who or what's going to be unhappy? Only the believed in essence, the believed in person. Now look at that word belief. We believe this, we believe that, we believe everything. Look in your dictionary, what's the definition of belief? An unquestioned acceptance of something in the absence of reason. Unquestioned of something in the absence of reason. And isn't that what we do? We believe there's this me and everything is relative to this me. Relativity or relationship is duality. That's the split, that's the separation. There's nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Now that's what how thinking functions, good and bad. Pleasant, painful, happy, sad. Words, and we take the words to be separate and divided. And that division causes the fear when I believe I am this individual, I'm insecure and vulnerable, I don't know what's going to happen next or who to believe or who to like or what to dislike. All sorts of psychological dramas and traumas come up. 
and the energy of belief going into them, they're reinforced and a story comes about. A story made up of concepts, words, ideas, meaning. Have a look at your stories. What ha What's there if you don't relate to any story? What's wrong with right now if I don't think about it? Can I say it's good, bad, pleasant, painful, happy or sad? I'm not thinking about it, I can't put any of those words without the word. Do I disappear? Do I fall apart? I don't. When I go to sleep at night, the words disappear. If I was the word I, and it's not there when I go to sleep, it'll be the end of me. But it's not, because I wake up and realise that the life is still there. There is an absence of the words, concepts and ideas in sleep. A dream might occur and form a semi another world and me in it taking all sorts of activities and things in it. And it can be fear, anxiety, stress, love, hate, all these things in the dream. The same as it is in this waking state. When I wake in the morning, where does it all go? It all disappears, pointing out that it was appearance only, only seemingly so. And I don't realise in the waking, when I wake up, I wake up to this waking dream. Because when I look into the dream, when I wake up in the morning and realise that my body had never moved off the bed and no words had come out of the mouth, yet all these things took place. Now I wake up, they're seemingly real and taking place. No. The word, the dream, is not the reality. And this waking dream is not the reality either. It's only how it appears. And it's all happening to me. Believed in me. I am this person. I am this individual. I am this name the parents put on me, this label. But realise it's all words, concepts and ideas. Without the word, do I disappear? I don't. So wouldn't it be wise to recognise and see if this is so? I beat myself up with the concepts and ideas. Only me, it's only the idea of me that I have this image about can be fearful, anxious, depressed, guilty, shameful, jealousy or envy. Me is the cause of all this psychological. A belief in a word, a concept, an idea is the cause of all this psychological suffering. Cause and effect. The effects of the cause are the words we put up, the anxiety, the feelings and sensations, the fear, the anxiety, the stress, the happiness, the unhappiness. Cause and effect is what they call karma. And we've got this big fear about so-called karma. What happens if I recognise the cause me as a fiction? and ask the simple question, can there be an effect if you're not relating to a cause? We'll test it out. Don't relate to the cause, mate. Just leave it as it is. See what happens to the effect then. If it comes up out of the habit phase, it's not going to last too long without being reinforced with the words, concepts and the stories we go on with. Anyway, it just Struck me, yeah, so it's gone on long <laughs> enough. And you all here, and a lot of you know all about it, and let it out, tell people about it. And they, those that might hear it in a different way, it might be what they need to hear, and it might, you know, those that are new and might have questions, and they might hear what you've got to say. 
but realise that everybody is already that. And that's the problem. We toast ourselves up with saints, saviors, saviors and seers, people we think are superior and better, and believe in the person. And I'm not good enough or I'm not that right. Enough. And that's the problem. But recognise if you are already that, then it, where's the problem then? And all around you, with the appearance, can, <coughs> if necessary, be utilised, can be used, which it is done in the way the world is functioning and patterning, expressing it. But because it's still relating to the separate entity, there are a lot of problems. But the one essence appearing, patterning, and expressing it as everything, which it is, needs the pattern, shape, and form to express through. And we take the, the things that express it through to be real. Recognize your true nature. So get into it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Yes, we need to, you can turn your, your ears. And yeah, welcome again. Uh, we had a beautiful conversation just before Bob started talking between few people here. And I wish you could actually share with the same freedom and the same clarity when, when the sharing time comes, because this is really important what Bob ju just said right now. It's no one superior. He's not a sage and seer that is anything more and anything better than you are. The same life is shining out of his eyes and the same life is shining out of yours. You may have the concept that, no, no, this is not the same life. There is me, some little creature there that takes credit for that light. <coughs> but that's just a thought. Without that thought, it's still the same light. So finding the way to let it, let it really express through you, it might be more helpful. I remember finding it uh, 10 years ago when I was coming to the meetings that Bob would recite the spiel. And it is such an advanced, condensed way of presenting the pointers without any fluff or any adornments that sometimes it was a little bit too much for the mind. So I needed to hear someone who didn't have much clarity, but it was unpacking it. And I remember people unpacking some of the pointers and they landed out from those who didn't really have 48 years behind them or even 48 hours behind them of clarity. So yeah, just uh, use that opportunity and see how it comes out of you. See what you understood. Even to say, you know, even if there is one pointer that really resonates, really landed, and you really feel that's true, and saying it out loud, it will reinforce it in you and it, will, it may actually really help someone. One pointer, one thing that is truth. I mean, everyone knows that they are. That's unquestionable. But some of those things that Bob is uh, mm -hmm. saying and, and showing in, in so many ways, any of that? Anyone would like to? Please. <coughs> yeah, for me, the <coughs> what's wrong with right now, if you don't think about it, is, is just a classic. Really? <laughs> it is. Um, but I was, I don't know, I think I was talking to Helen about past and present and um, she mentioned something the other day when we were chatting on the phone and I got this, just this, like, it's like, um, you know, the classic balance scale where you've got, you know, the middle point which is now and then you've got either ends of the scale, you've got, you've got the past mm. and the future 
and everything's fine if you've got it in balance and you're in the now. But if you're going one way or the other and you're constantly going back between forwards and backwards, there's no equilibrium. Yeah. So the equilibrium is, is in the middle now. Mm. And I found that as a really nice little, you know, visual reminder that if you're feeling out of balance, it's because you're not, you're not here, I, now. Yeah. So that's always helps me anyway. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. That's Simple. the razor's edge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Bob. Um, I think sort of on the same sort of vein I've been working with, um, it's like whenever I want to be somewhere else or doing something else, that's when I feel... Um, some form of conflict or contrast inside of me whereas when I'm just doing what I'm doing and mm. leaving it at that then like nothing's wrong yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's even beyond you know beyond fine it's just and it, there's a sense of presence, I guess, and it's hard to find the words because, you know, but but there's definitely there's no suffering, you know, mm. and that that absence of suffering is is when I'm just doing what I'm doing, yeah. and even when somebody tell, tells me to do something, and you, in the past, if I have a plan of what I'm doing, and then somebody sort of interrupts it, I guess, and asks me to do something else, I get a bit angsty or something. Mm. then there's a bit of feeling of conflict um, which is un an unpleasant sensation but then nowadays I'm sort of more open to that interruption mm. and don't perceive it as an interruption it's just what's sort of what's happening yeah. um, and that, that losing um, just losing that idea of having a like a destination Mm. you know whereas it's just sort of step by step but without a start and finish of everything it's just wow. is what it is and so then it just there's just less suffering I guess mm. so yeah and that's that that now but every time I I hear people talk about the concept of now my logical mind goes there's no such thing yeah. um so um because you can can't postulate a start and a finish mm -hmm. so there is no now um and but it's just a word and it's just a pointer and it's just you know talking about that different differentiation between you know past and present and stuff but and i think the word presence is working more for me yeah. um but again they're all just mind yeah. concepts and ideas mm -hmm. and just exploring you know what is actually causing that suffering and that agitation mm. um, and not buying into it. It's just interesting. But yeah, thank you. Beautiful. Yeah, that's yes, beautiful. Yes. Uh, uh, the, more, the more that you're in that presence, awareness, <clears throat> you can't be interrupted. There there's, no inter interrupted. there's no interruption. You know, when people say, oh, they interrupted my meditation. I said, well... <laughs> if your presence awareness is the meditation if you like which cannot be interrupted <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to see it <laughs> later um, <laughs> later later uh, actually it made me think of a little song that we made up a few months ago, uh, if I can remember it. I haven't got my little guitar today, I forgot. Oh, we have, we have a spare one here. Oh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, guess I can't get out of it then. Oh. Okay. okay, let's see. Let's see if this is, I don't know, let's have a look. Yeah, it is. So, okay, hang on.
day, day by day, follow the way, presence in my heart, breath by breath, step by step, love is the Follow the way, presence in my heart, breath by breath, step by step, love is the path. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I have a couple of comments from people who are online with us. So uh, there is, Ario says, love you, Bob. Thank you. Everything is that. And I am that. Yeah, that's a beautiful pointer to remember. And we have um, Gilbert says, pity the poor, poor me. <laughs> it is a total fiction. Everything about the me is a fiction. And Ram make a joking comment with a big laughing uh, face. Get over your pathetic personal point of view, Gilbert. That's just <laughs> that's the that's the boys teasing each other. <laughs> and that's that for now. <laughs> I got something to say, Please. Gilbert and Ram. Um, <laughs> but I but I won't. <laughs> but but Bob said like today, like where are you without your story? You know, um, yeah. and it's like it's perfect. Like where, <laughs> where do you stand when the story's gone? Um, and it's this, and 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 like you're talking about presence, and you're just saying about presence. But like, you know, I remember someone said, "Oh, trying to get in the now," and and Bob like so brilliantly says, "Like, try and get out of it. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> try and get out of the now. It's like incredible. Mm. Uh -huh. um, if anyone's striving or worrying or trying to get into now, be more present or get." out of the now like you can't, yeah. everything occurs in this mm -hmm. in this spontaneity of what this is and god knows what it is like <laughs> <laughs> who knows what you can't describe it or define it or you can come up with infinite words and poems and songs but really <laughs> we have no idea um mm. and it's some sort of miraculous thing that's going on all the time um it always has and always will and um uh that's all <laughs> Yeah, that's beautiful. I love how it beautifully binded what you know what what Sha was saying about you know feeling sense of uneasiness whenever whatever you are doing is not in tune of what you would want to do. You will want to be something else, somewhere else, do something else, or any sort of a desire. The Buddha says that desire is the is the key or the source of suffering. But as you said, you know, can you get out of the now? If you recognize that even the desire is just a passing phenomena happening in the now, mm. that desire is more of a laughable thing than the something that causes a suffering. Suddenly you are free from the desire. It doesn't mean desire won't arise. It means it will arise and pass away. Just like our cats, you know, they sometimes talk Bob into giving them a treat and they have a very distinct language, meow, and sometimes that desire will be uh, satisfied and sometimes it will just move on. But there is no suffering anywhere, even if the desire arises and passes away. So if the narrative arises, and Bob sometimes quotes that beautiful little poem, anonymous mm. poem, I was trying to find the author, but who cares, life is the author always and ever. Uh, as a rule, a man is full. When it's hot, it wants it cool. When it's cool, it wants it hot. Always wanting what is got, what what he's not. not. <laughs> Never wanting what is got. Can you uh, say that slowly. <laughs> <laughs> you say it, Bob. It's yours. <laughs> you say it. Oh, come on. Go on. <laughs> as a rule, a man is full. Maybe you can put this nice melody to it. Yeah. Okay. Or you can say, as a rule, a mind is full. When it's hot, it wants it cool. When it's cool, it wants it hot. Always wanting what is not. Never wanting what is got. As a rule, a mind or man is full. 
And that's the desire, that's the little story about, you know, you are here, oh no, I want to be in Sofia having a cake, or I want to be, you know, on my birthday party, whatever. It's always, or, or you're doing a task, washing a dishes, and oh shit, you know, I don't like doing it, I want to do something else. Oh, I have those thoughts in the head, I don't like those thoughts, I want them to stop. Or, oh, I'm not enlightened, I want to be enlightened. Any idea of just being out of tune with what is happening, of mm. stopping being space, but taking position in that space. This is me, this is I, and I am right, and God or life is wrong. Mm. That situation is not as it should be, because I, the individual, the imagined separate self, I know better. <laughs> and it's laughable when you see how it comes, and when you see which the function of what is it, when you see the love behind it, it's, it's cute, it's nothing wrong. The mind can come up with whatever it does, but it is a screen. It is like Bob was saying, it is that Indian and cowboy on the, street, on the screen. And you, as the witnessing presence in which that arises, that desire or that arguing with what is, that isn't touched, never. And just relaxing out of taking a position, taking a point in space that this is me, this is what I believe, and this is right, and the life is wrong, relaxing out of that fixed position and being that limitless, boundless, un, um, un, how you say it, the space that is just free to be without any tight costume of boundaries which are only and always forever mind made, made because they can't be experienced. Sensations can be experienced, but really body is a concept. Body is an idea, it's an image. You can say, I experience my body. Well, do you really? You only experience it when it produces some sensations, and then you don't experience the body, you experience sensation. So you are the space in which the sensations arise. That's just experience. There's nothing wrong with having those concepts. They, as Bob says, they're beautiful, uh, beautifully helpful in navigating that complex Maya dance, but knowing them for what they are, knowing that experience comes first and the concepts are just a helpful function, I can enjoy them. Let's see if we have any comments. Gilbert says, <laughs> start, that was in the answer to Ram, start from the fact that you are that. Then the absurd hunger for non-duality is meaningless. That's exactly right. Yeah, and that's how <gasps> Dean also pointed out when Bob says, you know, can you get out of the now? Are you unaware? Well, no. And then the bat comes, and then you can laugh at the bat forever. Because, yeah, the bat is only arguing with the obviousness. It means the obviousness got missed out somehow. If you realize you are that space, that boundless, free, open field of knowing already, what else do you ever need to find? Or what liberation do you need from? The only liberation is from the misconception of being separate self. If that misconception is gone, life just unfolds and nothing is wrong. Anyone? Anyone have maybe another pointer that you really like that really speaks to you? That's ah, uh, oh, go on. Uh, I really thank you. Um, the one that really touched me uh, this time was when you said, um, "Bob, the same life is shining out of everybody's eyes." Mm. That is the thing that really went whoa that then gives me that sense of, ah, the one. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I feel a lot of resistance when I think of speaking, mm. so that's why I'm choosing to speak. <laughs> um, to add to what some of you guys have said one thing i always realize is like after always after having a you know beautiful spiritual mystical experience of oneness 
the next few days after that, I always find myself chasing that experience, mm -hmm. which is, uh, and I, in that process of chasing that experience, I always lose the reason I had that experience in the first place, <laughs> which is just being present. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I sit down and be present not trying to meditate, not trying to have any experience in particular and then it happens again and then it's just such a delicate art of just always not resisting what is right now so yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you Mm. As you say, we try to grasp it with a concept, and we fail. As I'm saying, we bound to fail because it's not not a concept at all. So instead of trying to grasp it, just relax again and let it come up as well. You've had a taste of it, and it'll always come up by itself. More and more frequently it comes up just the same. Well, the more and more you settle down into it, just the same as the, when we're thinking. The more and more we think, the more tied up and bound into it we get. Practice takes, makes masters, huh? You don't want to practice the thinking. <laughs> Not uh, that you have any choice, really. No, they want to practice. Yeah, you don't want to practice thinking and overthinking. Not that you have any choice, but it is a seeming choice of relaxation and recognition. Seeming choice of non-doing. And it's beautiful because you actually realize it by yourself. You realize that when you, know, when you chase behind, it kind of moves you away. And then when you give up, well, there it arises again. So that is the first-hand experience that you could totally trust. <laughs> a question uh, uh, when when Nisargadatta or you say uh, love all of it the dream like we are dreaming love all of it or none of it how do you love none of it I mean, are you going around hating everything? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. No. Yeah. It all becomes the one. Yeah. It is, see, it really, when you decide to paint everything into color white or black, everything disappears and the color disappears itself too. So it doesn't really matter whether you like everything or you love everything or you hate everything. If you make everything completely equal, they all disappear. Don't, don't discriminate. Yeah. So he kind of made a little bit of a figure of speech, a little bit of a kind of a play of a word and kind of made fun of duality. Because when both extremes, when you use them into the extreme, the opposite disappears, whether you love everything. And of course... He doesn't claim that you have a choice. Yeah. You choose now to love a, a raccoon poo or, you know, the, the Holocaust. No, it is just a pointer which shows that because you differentiate, that's why you suffer. Because you have preference, that's why it creates the center which takes credit or holds onto the preference. Life doesn't prefer winter to summer. It doesn't hate one or the other, hmm. or day to light. Life is completely neutral. But you can also say that life loves equally summer and winter, and the flood and the fire, and the day and the night. Or you can say that life equally hates love and, and hate or whatever. When, when there is, you see how the duality completely gets obliterated if you apply one attitude towards everything. The attitude disappears. I will listen to this <laughs> when I come home. Thank you. But, uh, 
in the Hensing Ming. <laughs> it says, when no discriminating thoughts arise, every everything becomes clear and undisguised. Make the smallest distinction, however, and heaven and earth are set infinitely apart. Yeah. Heaven and earth. Well, heaven and earth, they can't be apart. We call the sky heaven, look up into the heaven, and the earth's rolling around the sky. When are they ever apart? Mm. Yeah. Only conceptually. <laughs> The lover and hater are made of the same stuff. <laughs> the lover the, and good, hater of the dream. Good mm. point. Absolutely. Um, I uh, I keep thinking of um, that it's a living recognition. It's um, it's a recognition again and again and again and again and again um, because. Um, there's just that one, like one moment of of knowing and seeing and understanding the truth. At least that's what happened here. And then there's a like this unraveling again and again and again of uh, actually recognizing the truth here, 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 because it seems that um, that's 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 how. Uh, how God or consciousness claims itself uh, through taking itself to be something and then realizing it's not. And, um, and, and I, what I've noticed is that it all comes back to sensation in the body um, and that some sensations are discriminated against by the mind um, into oh this is a sensation that I enjoy or this is a sensation that is scary or whatever um, but at some point you realize you can't actually get away from the sensation and so there has to be this kind of relaxation into the actuality of the sensation and then there's the understanding that is right there underneath it. It's like it reveals itself as being nothing. So the sensation which became something because the mind attached a story to it and created that subtle separation is just seen for what it is. But I think... <sighs> What, what feels really important as far as the, the understanding goes is that there's, there's actually no one and there's this illusion that, oh, someone's got it and someone hasn't. Mm. And, and I've experienced that in my own self, that there's this subtle sense of claiming that feels like, it, it, again, it's that what Bob just said, that you can't go left or right and any movement, even a hair breadth movement away from what, what the actuality is, which includes everything. It includes every thought, every sensation, every movement, even perceived stillness. The, the moment there's a hair breadth movement toward I got it or I am it, <laughs> It, it you you're back in the dream and uh yeah and it's subtle it's it's really yeah. it's really subtle and so i notice sometimes i'm in deep suffering yeah. and it, it feels so real it's like holy fuck like i i have so much work to do like even just that thought or um or there's something to do in order, and then I might even go about the business for for a little while of of of, of believing that, and it all comes back to the this uh, sensation in the body that feels that that may have some memory attached to it, and then some story. And then there's a, a kind of a wanting to move away from that. I don't want to feel that. It, it is too painful. But inevitably, there has to be 
a sense of willingness and even that like you, you can't even make that happen but the sense of willingness arises because the suffering got too great it cracks mm -hmm. you open again and there's the truth again so mm -hmm. that's like it's not static it's not oh I got it and now I'm like holier than thou and unaffected by life or whatever you know <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's just yeah and so it's pretty funny and and it you know and I just see like I get you know life puts me in all these different situations that challenge the truth the challenge of me to realize there's no me and that it is just the livingness you know um, and you know sometimes there's red in the face and there's a sense of self-consciousness and you know, it's just like these layers of conditioning that just need to be kind of seen through um, mm -hmm. again and again and again. So, um, yeah. Mm. Beautiful. Hello. Beautiful. Yeah. I have a couple of comments here from... Uh, uh, Ario says... Being is beautifully effortless. And Colin says, uh, all is the play on the screen. The screen is like Teflon, non-stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <coughs> and, I, and I love what you said, Lindsay, just constant recognition that there is no self. That no matter how real everything, how real the suffering feels, mm. there is no self. There is just a just a passing suffering. I mean, gosh, what suffering? Resistance, passing resistance coming. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's just so wonderful to have those animals that we have around in our house. And you can tell that they do experience unpleasant sensations. Yeah. They experience cold. They go sometimes check out and it's raining. They don't like it. Wonderful. That's part of the survival instinct to not like what is not pleasant. And isn't that like, yeah. um, like that's, I, th I think it's taken me so, so long, like decades to finally really get that unpleasant sensations are part of what is, mm. you know, that, 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 that I am, I'm actually nothing. And I feel like the older I'm getting and as the body's aging, mm. any kind of remnants of, of, of self identity that's wrapped up in the illusion of this physical form, um, they're the parts that suffer. And it's, it, mm -hmm. it, it's literally uh, an imagination. It, it's an imagination. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that the sensation goes away. No. The se sensation comes and then it, and then it goes. And mm. I think a huge learning for me is realizing the impermanence of sensation because the mind, at least from my experience, um, what's happened here because there's been a lot of bad things that have happened in my life, mm -hmm. um, that there's this sense when there's something really uncomfortable or so-called painful that it's never ending, like it's that's mm -hmm. it. That, that, that I'm in actual hell and to actually just, yeah, to, to see with grace, I suppose, because you can't, you can't really make yourself see, but you can intend to, to seek the truth. Um, and I think that's, that's where the intention to, um, to seek the truth again and again like what's actually true mm. um, and then it just yeah so a lot of the pointers actually for me just seem really silly in a way because I, I know I know that I've hid behind a lot of those pointers mm -hmm. it's like there's been a pointer and then it's like oh I'm supposed to just be that or uh, like, oh, I, I am the screen upon which all appears. Okay, <laughs> but do you actually really know that? <coughs> like, so it is, it is that 
I think we have to be willing to suffer to see that mm. to, to see what suffering actually is you mm. know so anyway mm, that's so. yeah that's beautiful being willing to suffer I mean being so unconditionally accepting of whatever life wants to experience in this in this form at this moment even if that's crucifixion so if there is of course and it comes in a package with the resistance it has to because that's the survival instinct but is it me resisting no it is the program it's the body wired to resist whatever is threatening its existence so that that resistance is actually welcome part of the landscape it has to be there and it is not about losing a resistance to being crucified goodness <laughs> why would you I mean our cats don't lose the resistance to being kicked or refused the, the food and they are in natural state it's just to recognize that that resistance belongs to the whole uh, scene to the whole body and it is actually a wonderful wonderful thing it's another expression of love to be the fact that I don't want to suffer is the proof that there is a loving to be and recognizing it as such already brings a little bit of uh, of relief and that staying open and staying curious about okay that's hell now so being curious about that hell what does it really mean how deeply does it go I love when you say just being, wi being willing to find out mm. to look for the truth to always have that if there is any uh, a reminisce of a, of a, of a self or, or center, having that completely devoted and committed to getting to the bottom of things. And the bottom of things is, is, is always freedom. Because that is the cognizing emptiness. That is the emptiness coming into, like Bob says, shapes, patterns and forms and everything. And as he says, an adornments of space are equally uh, he was saying they may be beautiful, you know, space may adorn itself in all the pleasures and beauties, or they may be horrific. Space may adorn itself with all the wars and famines and horrible things. I see if there is anyone who says that. Yeah. Yes? And, and as he said about the pointers, yeah, that's all the point. People go in the direction where, where they're pointing to. The point is not. No. At all, it never will be. Mm. So they say, oh, you hear it, say, oh, that's good, I've got it. No. But you see a signpost on the road, so and so, to mm. so what's the names away? Oh, you don't say, oh, I'm there. That's where it's pointing to. That's where it is. You have to go there and see it. The same when you're pointing out this, you've got to investigate and see for yourself, because nobody can tell you or give it to you. That's it. And here Gilbert says... Okay, yeah. Okay, I'll get quickly, I'll get Gilbert. Uh, many do 10 days retreats, trying to go beyond the mind, trying to beat the thinking into silence. Mm, absurd. There can be no more silence than there is. The silence is before the cosmos, before every sound. Why not start from the fact that you are already beyond the mind and all its contents and contexts? I don't want to be nothing is based upon fear. That was quote unquote. Is based upon fear. You, uh, uh, who are you really? Seriously, who? A story of a me? impossible. If belief in a me holds a sway over your life, then you have purchased shares in a fraudulent enterprise, <laughs> waiting for dividends from a counterfeit enterprise is foolish and full of disappointment. Investigate the belief in me. Beautiful. Thank you, Gilbert. Mm -hmm. Me is a thought, says Jasmine. And Peter, you go and then Tony. Yeah, um, <coughs> Lindsay and Bob and Kat and everyone had already expressed everything I wanted to say, but I'll, I'll add it in my own words anyway. And that is just that there's no rules. I don't, I don't see that any rules apply here. And yet, as humans, we're always looking for that rule, that one rule, you know, the one thing we can grab and hold mm -hmm. 
to be the truth. You know, the, the truth is such an elusive little beast, isn't it? You know, <laughs> when I have um, the idea that I've got something, instantaneously the opposite thought is there. So I'm under a kind of duress at that point. Right? And two, we just simply acknowledge that there is no truth. There's no relative truth here. There's no way in which we can say we found the way out now <clears throat> through this method, particular method. That's all I want to say. Mm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. <coughs> Do you remember? Yeah, so. There's a pattern here that has a big fear. It's not going to remember stuff. So it's interesting watching all the dread and go up in relation to that. But yeah, just about um, the take here on all or nothing. So nothing, the take here is really that when the thoughts aren't in there, there's just like a visual out there or a visual behind the eyes, like a ready brown color. Mm. And um, then the something or the everything is like, well, for example, Lindsay was expressing about the moment when there's nothing there for somebody else. And that just, then there's just a joy arises here, as long as nothing comes up in this head either. Um, it just seems to be, or the memory of somebody just laughing in a way that you just know there was nothing there. Mm -hmm. And that just brings up a joy, like right now the mouth is going up, you know, the, <laughs> the things are happening because nothing's coming in to stop it. Um, because I don't know, I don't have much experience, a lot of the lovey doveyness lately, and um, even struggle to say the word love just because of patterns in here. But yes, yeah, so the closest I've got is the automatic joy that comes up, you know, for very, sh for very short lived time. <laughs> <coughs> or not. Feel the song coming on. <laughs> Beautiful. Now I've worked out how to play your ukuleles. Beyond that is wrong to win. Beyond that is right to win. There is a field, a beautiful field. I'll meet you there. I'll meet you there. Thank you. 
online comments. Um, One thing um, that can happen is this sense of wanting to remember ourselves, mm. no? Because we, we tend to think we go out with the mind. But the, it's direct experience, it's here all the time. It never goes anywhere. <laughs> you know, everything is appearing in it. Yeah. So this, and we can say we need to remember this, but it's, it's just coming back, it's sitting back in yourself, it's being here, it's recognizing this all the time. <laughs> Mm. not to, you know, because the mind wants to make a story, wants to make a plan, wants to make a practice of something. But it's just like recognizing I'm breathing and breathing has always been happening, mm. despite me. There's nothing to do, there's nowhere to go. It's here. Mm. Nice. Yeah. But just, so, when we're breathing, we're often doing something else, for example. So then, then our awareness of our breathing is limited or non-existent. And it's only when we, we remember or recognise it later that in retrospect we go, yeah, well, I must have been breathing because I'm still breathing now and, you know, that time has passed and, you know... Well, we presume, actually, all of that stuff, actually. But when you recognise, when you recognise, it's not like you've gone anywhere to recognise. It's here. Yeah, sure. This awareness has always been here. It's like you recognise the breathing has always been here. And I didn't have to be holding it or identifying with it or doing anything about it. it I'm here. You know, it's like, I always have the analogy of this water. You know, I am this water, this consciousness, this beingness, no? And these bubbles of identification of shoulds, of should go out, what am I going to do, what doctor to go to, you know, not more information, I'm being overwhelmed. You know, this bubbles up and we, you know, identify with those. But always we're here. We're here. Yeah. And this is all that needs to be recognised time and again, is that I'm here. I di and I didn't go anywhere, that's the point. <laughs> that's the mm. point. Oh, there's nowhere to go. There's nothing, it's just here. Mm. Yeah. There's never been a journey to anywhere, ever. Mm. You know, it's like when you wake up out of deep sleep. I was here, you know, I can't say there was anything in there, because there was no mind content in the, in the deep sleep. But I was totally here. I know that. And this comes from such a depth. And it's not of the mind, no? Mm. Mm -hmm. that's, that's beautiful. That's just beautiful, beautiful. I love that point of here as well, more than the, the idea of now, because yeah, now has all sorts of different connotations while well, here. And when you say yes, the bubble or the thought appears in here. Every thought of the most distant lands and the other end of the galaxy appears here. And there is no me going on that thought. There is just thought. So I cannot go anywhere. I am the here. I am not here. I am the here. This is what I am, the here-ness, the here-nowness, whatever, nowhere-ness. And the thought appear in that what I am. Even the thought about other places and other people, and even the thought about me being a woman from Poland or whatever it is, it appears in here. Like Bob sometimes says, he, he points out that the past and future is only imagination or memory anticipation or memory but where are they experienced presently presently you can experience what you ate for dinner you can't go and leave it you can only experience it presently presently you can experience your plans and projections but you can't experience them fully you only experience them as a thought a concept so every thought it doesn't take you anywhere because that what you are 
You are not the little me embarking on a train of thought and, and being taken, carried away. It feels this way, it seems this way. But you are really the presence in which that thought creates that illusion. And recognizing that presence, always coming back to the presence, to the recognition that even a thought of the you know, million years, light years or whatever is happening here now. And then there is no one to get lost in the mind. There isn't. There is just a thought arising. There is no one in that thought, having that thought, experiencing that thought. It's the presence on which that thought arises. I see if there is anyone here. Uh, Sheetal says, uh, I'm really enjoying it, Kat. Nice to see the whole congregation. This is my first time to see you all. And welcome. <laughs> yes, thank you. So anyone? We have another few minutes. I'll say Peter. one more thing. <coughs> I think it's a, a uh, soft landing. I don't think it's a soft landing, though. Kind of like when we... Uh, Acknowledge that our mind is like monkey mind, you know, yeah, the old Indian saying where they uh, catch monkeys in South India with the uh, <laughs> banana and a, a necked pot. The monkey goes and grabs, makes a fist, grabs the banana, and then tries to get away by keeping on holding onto the banana. You know, running around, the guy catches him, of course, but he could have got away if he just simply let go of the banana. Let's <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. let go of the banana. Let go of bananas. <laughs> let go of your mind. Really, yeah. you have to let go of every every notion of what's you know, good and what's bad. It's a Buddhist T-shirt. Let go of that shit. But mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, anyway. yeah, it is. It is a nice little pointer. It's a. Uh, it is a pointer, a nice little pointer. Just just let go. Let go of the monkey mind. And then the bat mind comes, but who is there to let go? I forget about it. You know, if the pointer doesn't resonate, forget about it. Realize that what you are doesn't hold on to it. It's the realization that what you are in the depth, like Linda was saying, you know, not the bubble of imaginary me following imaginary whatever a wave on the ocean. The ocean is never holding on to anything. Within that ocean, the idea of holding on to arises. So if you can't actually follow up the point, that, come on, leave it, let it go, leave it as it is. Because you have an idea that there's no one to leave it or leave it as it is, then just recognize that you are that no one who is already detached who is already unaffected. Even if there is a part, or there is a part of attention trapped and affected by that banana, mm -hmm. that is just a part of attention. There <coughs> still is the presence, the witnessing presence, the field in which that trapped attention is being cognized, is being known. So even if there is a desire and there is a following of desire and there is a resistance and there is a narrative that is all being cognized in that emptiness that you are. Just relaxing and recognizing. That's the feel. That's I'll, the feel. I'll meet you there. <laughs> <laughs> there is no you and me in that field. We already won. <laughs> yeah. Like this room a couple of hours ago was empty. The other crowd there. And a few, few minutes will be empty again. Everything has changed but the space. Mm. Cognizing emptiness. The space is a capacity of cognizing, I know. As Linda was saying, the thoughts and things that come up, always here, always now. Nothing added to it, nothing taken away. And we have a we have a comment here from from Ram, and he says, "The counterfeit enterprise of me is a story that arises as temporary arising and adornment of that space that Bob speaks of. Sometimes that adornment is seemingly pleasant, and at other times awful, an adornment 
like any other. Yep. <laughs> Adornment of space. Made of space too. And like Bob was saying uh, on the beginning, you know, you, you were told that form is emptiness and emptiness is form and you might believe it either from Buddhism or from quantum mechanics, whatever. <laughs> Everybody says that, you know, like today, that that's all energy, dancing, moving. Energy constitutes subatomic particles, atoms, solid matter. Everything is the energy. And what's the energy? That's the emptiness, the alive emptiness, not nothing. But the no thing, it is not a thing. Although in the process of dancing, you know, the dance of Maya, it becomes a thing, the particles and matters and, and warmth and heat. And <laughs> but it's still the same one, no thing. And that you are. <laughs> Not the nothing, the radiant aliveness, the mystery. The miracle of existence, the beauty, the joy, the marvelousness of it all. <laughs> Even if it's unpleasant. Mm. No more comments? Anyone? Anyone got any bananas? Anyone got any bananas? Uh -huh. Actually, I have a couple of bananas, but not enough for everyone. <laughs> not enough jars. Enough <laughs> <laughs> bananas if everyone gives up. <laughs> yes, that's right, Drops Peter. <laughs> yeah, we can so just, yeah. just let you not hold on to those bananas. <laughs> not eat those bananas. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> thank you, Bob. Yeah, thank you, Kat. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you all. Love you all. Love you all. <laughs>